I'm Prashant Jain. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Illinois. And in this short video, I'd like to introduce a perspective article we recently wrote in the Journal of Physical Chemistry Letters. Uh, this perspective article gives uh, our, our view of a new, exciting new field in, in that relates to the so-called plasmon resonances. So what are plasmon resonances? Essentially, if you take a nanoscale chunk of a metal, it has a whole bunch of free electrons. And these free electrons have a natural frequency or natural resonance at which they oscillate back and forth in response to visible frequencies of light. And that's what gives these metal nanoparticles bright and brilliant colors. So essentially, a metal nanoparticle is like a tiny antenna. Now, I'm not telling you anything new. This has been known since the time of Michael Faraday. In fact, decades of research has gone into understanding and characterizing these resonances. In fact, when you say the word plasma and resonance to a person in the field, it immediately conjures up the image of a metal nanoparticle. They're that strongly associated. But a lot of this has changed because of some exciting new findings in the last two or three years. It turns out plasmon resonances aren't just limited to met metallic nanoparticles, where a sea of electrons is naturally available. Uh, you can take a non-metallic nanostructure, for instance, a semiconductor or an oxide, and you can artificially or synthetically intru introduce charge carriers into this nanostructure, either via doping or other physical methods of generating defects or impurities. And when you do that, you induce in this nanoparticle a carrier concentration that itself exhibits a synthetic plasmon resonance. This is exciting on many fronts. Firstly, what it does is it immediately expands the kind of materials which exhibit plasmon resonances. So apart from metals, several semiconductors and oxides uh, uh, have displayed plasmon resonances. And the list of materials that exhibit them keeps on growing. The second thing it has done is it has allowed uh, a very uh, new level, a new type of tunability or control. Uh, when you can uh, synthetically tune carrier concentrations, for instance, in the case of semiconductors, uh, these carrier concentrations can be varied over orders of magnitude. And what it does is it allows you to engineer, using the same material, you can en engineer a plasmon resonance that can range from the mid-infrared region of the spectrum to the visible region of the spectrum, a very wide range of spectral tunability. As an extreme example of such tunability, uh, you can even make plasmon resonances, especially when you use ultra-small semiconductor nanocrystals, you can make plasmon resonances that are really signatures of a handful of charge carriers. And this is what my lab is most excited about, because this raises questions like, how are these plasmon resonances of discrete number of charge carriers different from those of electron-rich metals? Do they exhibit any uh, quantum uh, effects? How does a collective resonance, which a plasmon resonance really is, how does it evolve from single electron ex uh, excitations? And a whole range of such questions on the topic of charge-charge interactions. The third exciting thing about a plasmon resonance in a non-metallic structure is that especially in a situation where you can reversibly introduce and remove charge carriers controllably, you can make a plasmon resonance that can be turned on or off. Now, why is this exciting? Now, imagine you, if you wanted to make an optical computer. What it would need is an optical analog of a transistor, a switch, uh, a switch where, uh, which, which has an optical signal which can be turned on or off. And that's exactly what this synthetic plasmon resonance uh, that can be switched on and off does. So you can think of these new types of plasmonic nanocrystals as ideal building blocks for a photonic or an optical circuit. Uh, essentially, the way we think about plasmon resonances has changed because of these new findings. They are no longer seen as simply optical attributes of metal nanoparticles. Um, they, they should be seen more generally as optical signatures of any arbitrary collection of charges. And there's many phenomena, uh, many electronic and chemical phenomena in catalysis, in photocatalysis, electron transfer, where uh, the, the process relies on motion of charges. And essentially from this optical, using this optical signature of this charge carrier collection, you can probe in real time uh, uh, how these processes actually take place. 
the advances as well as the findings that I just described uh, have really come about because of a combination of concepts and techniques from two very different fields. One is the field of quantum dots and semiconductor nanocrystals where uh, carrier doping and charge carrier control is both very well established and uh, very well understood. The other field is the spectroscopy of uh, optical resonances in metal nanoparticles where a lot of experimental and theoretical knowledge already exists. And it's this combination that has led to advances and will keep leading to advances. Going forward, uh, the field is going to benefit from the participation of uh, device physicists as well as non nano optics researchers for really applying uh, uh, these phenomena and materials in, in real, real world devices. Uh, people who, who work in catalysis and photocatalysis as well as sensing can benefit from these phenomena as well. Uh, there are many challenges but at the same time there are many opportunities that make this field promising and you can read all about uh, these aspects in our perspective in the Journal of Physical Chemistry Letters. Uh, the uh, editors have selected this, our perspective as an ACS author's choice art article which means it will be open access for everyone. So you can read uh, all about this field in the article. At the same time, JPC Letters has published some cutting edge research in this field which you can read through links on uh, related articles on the ACS website. Thank you.